More legal trouble for convicted murderer Martin McNeil, the Utah doctor found guilty of drugging and drowning his wife in 2007 so he could continue an affair. Well, now McNeil faces another trial in the next few months, this on charges that he sexually abused one of his daughters. Here for a fair and balanced look at this case, Brian Claypool, a criminal defense attorney, and Anna Yum, a former prosecutor as well. Uh, it is strange to a lot of people, this guy has just been convicted. He's going away uh, for life on, on the murder charge. Why bring up uh, another charge, Anna? Right. John, I think that's an excellent point. But prosecutors, keep in mind, they have to search for justice. And they have to search for justice not just for one victim, but for all victims involved. They, they sought justice for Michelle McNeil. They obtained that. And now they are seeking justice for Alexis Summers. Now, I understand that they're facing some criticism because, of course, the taxpayers have to pay for this type of trial. But at the end of the day, the prosecutor has a duty. If they believe that they can prove something, if they believe they can prove a case beyond a reasonable doubt, then they have an ethical duty to do so. And they have to champion the victim rights in order to fight for Alexis Summers and what they believe in. Well, I, I think most people would agree with that, Brian, except that this case was looked at when, when the daughter first brought charges against her father back in 2007, and ultimately they decided not to file charges. Why file them now? Hey, John, this is a classic case of what I call the O.J. Simpson hangover effect, part three. Part two, by the way, was the George Zimmerman arrest yesterday. And part three now is Dr. McNeil. What I mean by that is, here's a gentleman back in 2007 who allegedly killed his wife. The prosecutor at the time wasn't sure they were going to be able to prosecute him and get a murder conviction. So they filed child abuse charges. Then they dropped the charges. They didn't do anything for two years. Now, all of a sudden, they're going to prosecute Dr. McNeil. Well, they need to drop these charges for a couple reasons. They already got their guilty verdict, so their, their motive is highly suspect. And number two, John, there's no new evidence from 2007 when they decided not to prosecute McNeil until now. I'm one of the lead lawyers on the Miramonte child abuse case in L.A., and you need actual evidence. In that case, a teacher pled guilty because there were photographs, for example, of the children being abused, and there was physical and DNA evidence linking the teacher to the abused kids. You don't have any of that here, and you're going you're gonna to prosecute Dr. McNeil now and waste taxpayers' money? Alexis McNeil, I'm sorry, Alexis Summers is Dr. McNeil's uh, daughter. She is the one who filed the, the police report saying that her father, you know, groped her and fondled her while she was sleeping shortly after her mother died. She goes by Summers now, which I recall is her mother's uh, maiden name. She doesn't want anything to do with her father. How do we know, uh, Anna, that this is not just some kind of a, you know, a, a vengeance case against the, the man that she feels was responsible for her mother's death? Well, John, I think there's a lot of problems in the defense's case. Specifically, Dr. McNeil allegedly admitted to this conduct to Alexis. He apologized for this conduct. And he even said, I will drop custody. I will, and during their custody battle, he said, I will drop custody if you're willing to, to certify a notarized document that says that you deny that these sexual allegations actually took place. Now, my understanding is that Alexis was sleeping in the room. He was not supposed to be in the room. And then she wakes up to him groping her buttocks and kissing her hand. Now, Oftentimes, sex crimes are very difficult to prosecute because at the end of the day, there's usually no physical evidence to corroborate the victim's testimony. But it's going to be a credibility contest between Alexis Summers and Dr. McNeil. And Dr. McNeil doesn't have an excellent track record when it comes no. to his uh, veracity yeah. and his truthfulness. We should also so I think really it's yeah. going to come down to her credibility and also possibly the battle of the experts because he's claiming that he was allegedly sleepwalking during these alleged activities. We should also mention that usually uh, the identities of victims of sex crimes are not reported, but Alexis Summers has been uh, quite public about wanting this case prosecuted. Uh, Brian, to another case now, there are new reports that one of the stars of the hit VH1 reality show Mob Wives ordered armed thugs to abduct a man off a New York City street so she could shake him down for cash and jewelry. <laughs> Supposedly, she had given this guy $10,000, the story goes. Uh, he was supposed to get some <laughs> tickets to some NBA uh, All-Star game, and then she was going to resell them, make a lot of money. How do you go about proving a case like this, Brian? Well, first of all, thank goodness I didn't book my, my NBA hotel room uh, where, where this gentleman was supposed to reserve those rooms. I would have paid way too much. 
But look, I, I think I think these charges ought to be dropped, or at least they should be they, they should be reduced. First of all, you can't prove a kidnap, John, in New York. I looked up the elements of kidnapping in New York. You have to abduct somebody for at least 12 hours. I think it was a short amount of time, less than an hour. Number one. Number two, you have to transport the victim to another location. That never happened. If he was in the trunk of the car, the car didn't move. The reality here is that if you get a jury, John, of, of 12 normal folks out there, they could probably relate to, to Ms. Rizzo. Look, she, she gave this guy some money. He went and squandered it. He didn't give it back. She wants her money back, and, and she's trying to get her money back. They could probably relate to that. So I, I, I'm not condoning what she did, but I think at the end of the day, this guy uh, uh, is, is a thug anyway. He's a dirtbag. He, he, you know, he's got a prior criminal record, and he was kicked out of his apartment recently for not paying rent. So he doesn't really have a, you know, much of a... And uh, shortly after this incident, Ramona Rizzo sent out this tweet. When you steal or rob from anyone, make sure you are about that life. If not, get a real job. I mean, can that kind of thing be used against her? Absolutely. It astounds me that people really rely upon social media, not thinking that it could be used against them in a court of law. John, when I was a prosecutor, I would canvas these social media websites, whether it was MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, to see if I could get some incriminating evidence against the defendants. In this case, if she is prosecuted, you can definitely bet that the prosecutor is going to use these tweets against her because these are admissions, and if anything, it evidences her motive and her intent. Now, back to what Brian was saying, I understand that this victim might not be the most likely guy, but you can't condone vigilante justice. You can't take matters into your own hands. There's legal processes to try to get your money back, as opposed to hiring a thug to beat someone up, to kidnap them, and to rob them. Well, Jenna, Jenna tries to get me beat up just about every day. <laughs> but Anna, they, you, if you don't do that, you don't make the cover of the post. That's so, right. you know, <laughs> Anna Young and uh, Brian Claypool, thank you both. Good Thanks, legal John. analysis Thanks, and a few big stories there. And that is quite a photo on I the post. I am innocent, by the way. Mm. We're